He will be with me. He will be with me. He will be with me. Dean Martin Celebrity Roast, coming to you from the MGM Grand Hotel in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the beautiful Ziegfeld Room, tonight's star-studded roast has brought together some of the world's greatest entertainers. They've come from all over the world to be here tonight here in Las Vegas, in person. Joining Dean Martin as he honors tonight's very special Woman of the Year, Joan Collins. With tonight's guests, Angie Dickinson, Gavin McLeod, John Forsyth, Dom DeLuise, Ann Baxter, B. Arthur, Rich Little, Milton Burrow, Don Rickle, Phyllis Diller, Aaron Spelling, Jaja Gabor, Red Button, and your Roastmaster, Dean Martin, with tonight's Woman of the Year, Joan Collins. no bargain at all. Ellen Peetock bought a bargain brand baby shampoo. I thought it was going to be just as gentle as Johnson's baby shampoo. I used it and it was a fiasco. It stung my baby's eyes and he cried. They may say baby shampoo, but many bargain brands sting, irritate eyes. Only Johnson says no more tears. Johnson's is no more tears. You feel good as a mother using it. I won't buy anything else. Tonight, we're all gathered here at the beautiful MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas to roast one of television's most exciting and glamorous stars, Miss Joan Collins. Not only is our guest of honor a sex symbol, but she's beautiful, and that's because she takes care of herself. No coffee, no fatty foods, and she only has a cigarette after making love. She's down to two packs a day. <laughs> She's even introduced her own line of blue jeans. They're hard to get on, but easy to get off. <laughs> now, there's a lot of pretty women around, but every guy in this country would love to date Joan. Even George Burns tried, but she turned him down. Because printed on his shorts, it said, contents may cause drowsiness. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's pipe him aboard, Mr. Gavin McLeod. I think almost everyone on this dais has been a passenger on the love boat. Of course, Joan has sailed with us many times, and, well, you wouldn't believe how popular she is all over the world. In Trinidad, she was treated like a star. In Acapulco, she was treated like royalty. And in the Virgin Islands, 
She was treated like a total stranger. <laughs> And Dom, Dom DeLuise was scheduled for a cruise just last month. Unfortunately, he had to cancel because of a tragic development in his love life. His inflatable woman ran off with his spare tire. <laughs> and the wonderful Red Buttons has never sailed with us. But his wife told me that Red's a lot like a cruise ship. He's old, he's slow, and he only drops anchor once a year. <laughs> sailed with us, it was an experience the crew and I will never forget. The first afternoon at sea, we really found out just how sexy Joan Collins is. She accidentally fell overboard, and a shark swam up to her with a bottle of champagne and a Sinatra record. <laughs> and after we arrived back in port, she was really something. She got in line and went through customs where they gave her a strip search, she got back in line six more times. <laughs> Joan, it was certainly an honor having you on the love boat. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Miss B. Arthur. You know, though, Jane, I really, um, I don't know why I was invited this evening. I mean, um, I've never met Joan Collins. Uh, I realize that people assume, you know, that if you're an actress, you automatically know everybody in show business, but uh, that's just not the case. I mean, really, when would when would I ever have an occasion to meet Joan Collins? I haven't been to an orgy since 1946. <laughs> of course, I do know all about Miss Collins. You now, her show, Dynasty, is a tremendous hit. It's one of the highest rated shows on television. And I really believe that a great part of that success can be attributed to Joan Collins' acting and her beauty and a general decline in American morality. <laughs> now, really, you know, I can't believe the things they get away with on television. You know, shows like Dynasty or Falcon Crest, Dallas. I mean, it's amazing. You know, Dean, when I was doing Maud, the spiciest thing that we ever got away with was at breakfast once when Walter said to me, was it as good for you as it was for me? And he was talking about the crunchy granola. <laughs> oh, God, how times have changed. I yearn for the good old days when going all the way meant a hamburger with everything on it. <laughs> I, really, I don't know what to think. I mean, the permissiveness of television is getting out of hand. I mean, uh, but last week, my TV guide uh, came in a plain brown wrapper. <laughs> oh, but to be fair, it's not just the soaps. I mean, it's just about every show on television. You know, I saw one show last month. I, I'll never forget, ever. One of the characters was so ruthless that in order to gain control of an estate, he perjured himself at a trial, sending his brother to prison, married his brother's wife, he poisoned her, and then had an affair with the governess, and then claimed that his uncle was the father of his illegitimate child. <laughs> and that was on Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving special. that we are living in a permissive society. An actress today can get away with anything. But I must say that Joan Collins is not Alexis Carrington. Now, that's just a part. The real Joan Collins is a lovely person, if we forget the fact that she's destroyed more homes than the San Francisco earthquake. <laughs> 
No, but I think it's wonderful that she's so popular, and not just with men, with women, even children. You know, she's already the inspiration for next year's most popular toy, the Cabbage Bitch Doll. <laughs> not here to knock her, no. I, I say, let her knockers speak for themselves. I really shouldn't be talking this way about Joan. I mean, she really is a sweet, lovely person. I happen to know that when she was a young girl, she wanted to become a nun. And then she got into other habits. And even today, Joan is still deeply religious. You know that she went to confession one Sunday not long ago and was held over for three weeks? <laughs> uh, but to be serious, Joan, I do admire you. You are a gorgeous and talented lady, and it's been fun being here with you tonight. You know, I'd really like to get to know you. Hey, tell you what, I'll give you my phone number. Will you call me? Oh, better than don't call me, have John Forsythe call me. Okay? <laughs> tonight with his presence you you took the last three words away <laughs> give me a break Bell. I'm not like B. Arthur I don't read that fast and these glasses aren't mine greatest people in the world never got a dinner. But here's a guy that certainly deserves one, and I'm talking about Mr. Red Button. Why, ladies and gentlemen, are we giving this woman a dinner when some of the biggest people in the history of the world never got a dinner. <laughs> Joan Rivers, who said to Marcel Marceau, can we talk? <laughs> never got a dinner. Lee Iacocca of Chrysler, who said to Dolly Parton, why do you need an airbag? <laughs> never got a dinner. Captain Hook's mother, who set the little hook? <laughs> For God's sake, don't scratch it! <laughs> Never got a dinner. Long John Silver's wife, short. <laughs> That's right, Dino, look at me. He was long, she was short. <laughs> long John Silver's wife, who said to Long John, if the shoe fits, wear it. <laughs> Set the Phyllis Diller, you look weird. <laughs> Joanna Carson, who said to Johnny, not so fast. How about the loose change in your pockets? <laughs> never got a dinner, never got the change. <laughs> Rip Van Winkle, who said when he awakened, don't make the bed, I'm just going to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, Emmett Lazarus. Yes, my friends, Emmett Lazarus, the guy, the guy who signed the inscription at the base of the Statue of Liberty. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, but you'll have to pay the first month's rent in advance. <laughs> Paul Revere, who wore nothing but a raincoat and said, I will flash one if by land, two if by sea. <laughs> never got a gift. This woman gets it done. Clint Eastwood, sex therapist, who said to Clint, 
Do it any which way you can, but no sudden impact. <laughs> Alexander Graham Bell's wife, who said to Alexander on a wedding night, sorry, your three minutes are up. <laughs> Dr. Spock, who said, never raise your hands to your kids, it leaves your groin unprotected. <laughs> style, the grace. You know immediately, this is a thoroughbred. The Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme for 1984. For most of its history, Cutlass Supreme has been the most popular midsize in America. And as in all thoroughbreds, behind the style is performance. Every time you take a ride. There is a special feel. Everyone can see The Right Stuff, the motion picture that has been nominated for eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture of the Year. It is a vivid, funny, passionate human experience. See the Academy Award nominee for Best Picture of the Year, The Right Stuff, rated PG, now at theaters everywhere. Every day I burn up about a million calories out here. So really, I could drink any soft drink I want. I drink Tab all day long. I confess, I'm the world's biggest Tab fan. So where do I go when I want to go caffeine-free? You know, at night or like now? Caffeine-free Tab. This is Tab, just caffeine-free. The taste, the refreshment, and the one calorie doesn't hurt. Get up the diet, anything, you're my Tab. Today, you've got to be better than ever before. Soft and Dry announces better spray protection than ever before. You're nervous and tense, you need that score. But all they see is your skill and your pride. And Soft and Dry will help hide when you're nervous inside. A major breakthrough gives improved Soft and Dry a higher level of protection than any leading spray. New Soft and Dry will help hide when you're nervous inside. Ladies and gentlemen, a great comedian, Miss Phyllis Diller. Dean, there's one thing that I, I must say about you. You know, he's always impeccably dressed. And I like that red handkerchief in your tux there. It's cute. It was white before I wiped his eyes. <laughs> I've been doing some research on Joan, and I found some interesting facts about her early life. Joan was very popular as a teenager. She was 21 before she discovered that cars had front seats. <laughs> One morning, her car was dead. She sat on the engine. It started. <laughs> she has white caps in her waterbed. Fifteen husbands, four of her own. Joan, a lot of your friends and admirers couldn't make it here tonight, but they sent some telegrams. Here's one from the Hotel Association of America. 3,000 hotel and motel owners have just voted you Miss Do Not Disturb of 1984. <laughs> one from young Ricky Schroeder. <laughs> Thanks for sending me the Joan Collins coloring book. What do I do now? 
My crayons are melting. I just love him. Oh, you know what he did last night? We went out to dinner, and uh, he actually asked the waiter what wine would go best with bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> and I am delighted to be here to pay tribute to you, Joan. I watch Dynasty all the time, and Joan, as Alexis Carrington, you've done more than anyone to bring moral decay to the masses. <laughs> it's not surprising when Joan went to college, she was voted the most likely to succeed with anybody. <laughs> there have been several references made this evening to Joan's recent layout in Playboy, and some people may have objected, but as a layout, I mean, I'm sorry, but <laughs> as a layout, it was very good. <laughs> Joe, we have a little surprise for you. The photographer who uh, did your layout, they asked me if I might be interested in doing a layout, then I was talking to him, and he was so interesting about photographing models that uh, we invited him to be here tonight. So direct from the studio, we have Pierre Boulanger. Now, I'm here to talk about Playboy uh, magazine, which we all read. They've got great articles. <laughs> and uh, I loved your spread in it. You look marvelous. The only thing I can't understand the, the, uh, the, the ladies in the magazine, uh, they're all gorgeous, right? Beautiful hair, the high heels, except that what they have to say doesn't make sense with the pictures. <laughs> you know, they try and get very erudite or profound or philosophical. Doesn't make s The girl will come out and say, hi, my name's Judy, and I'd like somebody to know the real me. <laughs> somebody to know what life is all about. <laughs> somebody who knows my wants and needs. I just get icky when I hear Vivaldi. I can't stand men who think that pretty girls don't have no brains. My ambition is to always keep a cheer in my heart and a smile on my face. That's all I had to say. Good night. Charlie Callis, ladies and gentlemen. The fabulous Mr. Rich Little. Gosh. How do you like that? The lush and the luscious. That's where they put me. Joan, congratulations on being such a superstar that you are. Did you ever stop to think what your former husband, Anthony Newley, must be saying every time he thinks about your success? <laughs> what kind of fool am I? <laughs> or how about other celebrities? How about Jimmy Carter? Damn, it's good to be here. <laughs> Joan? I'm in trouble again. The lust is back in my heart. <laughs> what about Jimmy Stewart? I'd 
uh, uh, Joan, I, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Joan Collins and I never, uh, never went out together. We, we never were an idol. And, and it's, it's too bad, Joan, because I think, I think you would have liked me. You see, I make love uh, the same way I talk. Johnny Carson. <laughs> you know, Joan Collins and I have a lot in common. We're both famous for entertaining people in bed. <laughs> Did you know something? In all the years I have been in Hollywood, I have never dated Joan Collins. As a matter of fact, I've never even married her. <laughs> but I, I would like to, I would like to date Joan Collins. As a matter of fact, I'd like to have a little intimate supper some night, Joan. Just, just the three of us, you, me, and my lawyer. <laughs> Joan, I, uh, I love you. As a matter of fact, just looking at you lights up my cigar. Oh, incidentally, I, uh, I, uh, I took a look at that spread that you did in Playboy. I got very, very excited. The first page got my heart started. They, uh, the, 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 the next eight pages got me started. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, I, I love looking at those pictures, you know, looking at those pictures in Playboy is, for me, a lot like looking at pictures in National Geographic magazine. <laughs> Places I'm never gonna visit. <laughs> Joan, you know, I, I don't think you and I could ever become an item. I don't think that we could ever become a twosome because there's an age problem. Joan, I wish you were younger. messier than making a meal, but no matter what you splatter, spill, or splash, there's no better way of cleaning up than with SOS, because absolutely nothing cleans messy butcher block, greasy flatware, kitchen tiles, casseroles, even glassware, faster and easier than a super quick, super grease cutting SOS soap pad. SOS, it cleans a lot more than pots and pans. It says here the temperature on Venus averages 800 degrees. So let's go to the beach instead. 29 million miles away. The beach is closer. Here, finish this off before your ice cubes melt. Is that what I've been drinking? Yeah, they improved it. That's one calorie? Oh, it's got that new sweetener in it. It's sweeping the planet. Which planet? You know, the one with the beach. Taste improved by Diet Pepsi. The Dean Martin Celebrity Roast honoring Joan Collins will return in a moment. The Sabres are in action and Hartford will have details at 11. Ladies and gentlemen, the very lovely, oh, what a lady, Ann Baxter. particularly pleased to be here tonight and to join in this tribute to Joan because I've always felt that as an actress we have something in common you see 
At varying times in our careers, we both discovered that playing wicked ladies is a lot more interesting than playing women who are virtuous and uh, upright. <laughs> in other words, if you want to grab the audience, it's fine to be a swine. <laughs> now, I learned this quite a while ago in a classic motion picture called All About Eve, in which I, <laughs> like Joan, played the part of an ambitious, malicious woman who would do anything to get the man she wanted. You know, it's a crazy coincidence that the, the names of the characters sound alike. She plays Alexis Carrington, I played Eve Harrington. Carrington and Harrington. <laughs> Terrific vaudeville team. <laughs> and oh, are we vicious. Between the two of us, we have buried three husbands. Two of them are still alive. <laughs> Keep up the good work, or should I say, the bad work. <laughs> you know, evil, spelled backwards, spells live. And now it's time to introduce Mr. Warm. Huh. Don Rickles. When he checked into the hotel today, he bit the MGM lion. <laughs> and the crowd is really exciting tonight to, to be here for Joan Collins, my favorite star. <laughs> you, you, you know, Dean, I must say, from the bottom of my heart, we've known each other a lot of years, and I'll tell you the truth, it's over. <laughs> Gavin McLeod is a great star. He's my one of my favorite performers. I, in fact, I watch Love Boat every night. <laughs> you believe that? You're nuts. I, I use it as a nightlight when I fool with the wife. <laughs> Anne Baxter, what a marvelous star. Uh, she is a great actress. I watched her with Tyrone Power in a picture called Kiss My Wagon Train. <laughs> Darling, you're, you're a magnificent actress, and I love you. <laughs> Have you watched Hotel? All people in heat. Constant in heat. Everybody's a weirdo. I'm a yo-yo. I'm a moron. I'm an idiot. Help me. Help me. I want to check in. I want to check in. Give him the keys, wash up, and get the show off. That's what I'm saying. Dom DeLuise. What a great star. Bless your heart, Dom. You get any heavier, we're gonna put cords on your can and put you in the Macy Parade. <laughs> Red button, bless your heart, an Academy Award winner. Unfortunately, the public hasn't accepted that. <laughs> Phyllis, you have a beautiful body. You really do. You're the only one I know that swims in a beautiful lagoon and sharks go, oh. <laughs> Joan, you're a stunning star today. The star of Dynasty. Is it Dynasty? <laughs> I took a wild guess. <laughs> and I want to tell you the truth. I've seen the pictures in Playboy. <laughs> I love you when you're dressed. <laughs> no, I'm being cruel. You're, you're a lovely star. I, I remember you so many years ago when you said to me when I first opened in the Slate Brothers in California, when, psst, little boy. <laughs> going to roast my old friend Joan, I was so excited, I went out and bought a microwave oven. <laughs> well, I want to tell you something you might not know about Joan. Did you know that she writes a syndicated column that appears in newspapers all over England? She gives advice on love, romance, and how to make love. 
Her column runs every week in the papers like this. <laughs> I brought it along from London. Here's a letter from a young lady. When a girl breaks up her engagement, does she have to give back the ring? <laughs> General, I both agree. By all means, you must give back the ring. But please keep the stone. <laughs> is getting married. Dear Miss Collins, do you think it's right to have sex before marriage? Joan says, it's right to have sex before marriage and after marriage, but not during the ceremony. Tonight is the distinguished actor who plays Blake Carrington, the powerful and aggressive oil tycoon on Dynasty. He's a man who time and time again has given us many memorable moments on television, motion pictures, and on the Broadway stage. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to give you Mr. John Forsythe. I came here this evening, I expected to hear this dais shower our woman of the year with honors, tributes, and praise. Well, I've heard Tip O'Neill say nicer things about President Reagan. <laughs> I think it's time someone rose to defend Joan from all these vicious attacks. And as her colleague on Dynasty, I feel honor-bound to take that role. Just let me begin by saying that practically everything you've heard here tonight has been a fabrication. That means a lie, Dean. Oh. As I look at our guest of honor, it suddenly occurs to me that I put myself into a peculiar position. I'm defending a woman who would be much more fun to attack. <laughs> but I must halt this unending stream of prevarications. That also means a lie, Dean. <laughs> I'm still working on fabrications. <laughs> You, red buttons. You dare malign this woman, you scarlet squirt, you munchkin with a motor mouth. That's why you'll never get a dinner. <laughs> Just like Vincent Van Gogh, who said, I like the hat, but it keeps sliding over my ear. <laughs> and he never got a dinner. Yes, you should all be ashamed for having the audacity to abuse this innocent party. By the way, hasn't been to an innocent party in years. <laughs> Gavin McLeod, how dare you insult this slip of a girl? Who incidentally looks like dynamite in You slip. tell her me. <laughs> now, you may be the captain of the love boat, but tonight, your monologue was like the Titanic. Went right to the bottom. <laughs> Joan, I don't know whether I can repair the damage that has been done to you tonight by these terrorists in tuxedos. But I want everyone to know that this dazzling lady sitting here is deserving of much better than she's received. And I, for one, offer her accolades. <laughs> I say this because I work with her. And I know her to be a trooper and an unselfish team player. And if I don't say it, she'll take all my good lines on Dynasty. <laughs> so, um, we all love you. I love you. Practicing every day of the week is tough. I'm lucky I've got a great coach like Lorraine. She knows how to get me going. Like starting out the workout with a hot mug of Campbell's chicken noodle soup. I've always loved it. It's a great way to get up without getting weighed down. And it fits right in with my fitness program. I need to eat the right things because skating really takes it out of me. But you know, it's all worth it when I hear the applause. Campbell, Campbell's soup is good food. Hey, everybody, it's...
It's Uncle Joe. We all like to spend the weekends with family and friends. That's why AT&T saves you 60% on long distance every weekend, and they don't stop with savings. They give you service, too. Calling from anywhere to anywhere. Operator service calls that sound as close as you feel and 60% off. Joe, knew you'd make it somehow. Savings and service. That's AT&T. The more you hear, the better we sound. Reach out and touch someone. Does Signal make your mouth feel more minty and refreshed than the leading mint mouthwash? Signal if you feel it. Signal if you feel more mint. More mouth-tingling mint. Signal if it kills your mouth and icy shiver. Signal if it makes your tongue and taste buds quiver. Signal for breath that's more refreshed. Signal if you feel it. Signal if you feel more mint. When you feel the spirit growing, when the pride within is showing, when the winds of change are blowing, Buffalo, we'll be there. If it's happening, you'll see us. We'll be there. At the center, it'll be us. We'll be there. TV2. We'll be there. The gentleman I'm about to introduce is one of the most prolific producers that television has ever known, Mr. Aaron Spelling. Thank you, Dean. Joan, I'm sure you're overwhelmed by all this. I know I am. A distinguished dais, most enthusiastic audience, well, I'm sure television hadn't seen this much excitement since Merv Griffin did a salute to Pia Zadora. <laughs> I must admit I was a little apprehensive when we first signed Joan for Dynasty. I mean, being such a big star, we were afraid she might always be late, not know her lines, and scream about the wardrobe, the hairdressing, and the photography. Well, I want to be the first to tell you that Joan has never been late. <laughs> In closing, Joan, I would just like to say that you're the nicest thing that has come over from England since the London Bridge and the Queen Mary. <laughs> I love you, Joan. Thank you, Dean. And you, Joan, will be happy to know that my very good friend, Burt Reynolds, just bought a screenplay for you, and he wants you to be his leading lady. I'd like you to meet the man who wrote the movie, the internationally known Italian screenwriter, Signor Dominic de la Relentus. Buongiorno, Dino. Oh, buongiorno, Las Vegas. Arrivederci, Cash. <laughs> Oh, Miss Collins, I got something to oh, tell you. Oh, no, that's In... Miss Collins. Miss oh, Collins. over there. You I... know Miss Collins. No, I'm her brother, Tom. <laughs> There's Miss Collins. Oh, that's a Miss oh, Collins. Yeah. Oh, that's much better. The love scene's gonna work much better this way. <laughs> Is this going to be an X-rated movie? Yes, it's X-rated because we use all our ex-husbands. <laughs> in the first scene, you are standing with your lover in the Via Veneto, and you are feeding the pigeons. Be very careful with the pigeons, because you might get a disease. Why? 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 Well, they're carrier pigeons. <laughs> now, I take you to the Sistine Chapel, where you see the beautiful paintings of Michelangelo on the ceiling. She's already seen a million ceilings. And this is a story very exciting because you fall in love with a man who's married and has five kids. Vincenzo, Nunzio, Mario, Angelo, and Irving. Irving? Irving is adopted. Now comes the love scene. Dean, a little music for the love scene. We could make believe we're married. Excuse me, Dean. Wait. Don't you know any Italian sonatas? Frank sonatas? <laughs> oh. 
John, you walk into a restaurant and there's a hundred women. And everybody looking at you because you're naked. You got nothing on but a napkin. <laughs> yes, and the waiter comes to you and says, what will you have? And you say, I will have the veal pizzaiole. Huh? And Bert orders the sausage. You don't like your pizzaiole, so you crave the sausage. <laughs> Uh -huh. You got a grip on it. And he says, give me my sausage. You say, no. And then the waiter says, wait, let me bring you something, our house specialty. And you say, what is it, this? You taste it. You say, this is a rotten. This is tasteless. He says, that's why we call it veal a la Alexis Carrington. <laughs> Myself. We've been friends for over 30 years, and there's a reason for it. Mostly bad luck. <laughs> I'm kidding, Mr. Milton Burrow. Thank you. Can't tell you what a thrill it's been all evening sitting next to Shaja Gabba. <laughs> Talking to me and telling me every moment, Milton, I feel like a new man. I, uh... <laughs> Tonight, we are honoring Joan of Arc, uh, Joan Collins, <laughs> the star of Dynasty. It has everything, incest, adultery, wife swapping, lesbianism, <laughs> and that's just in Joan's dressing room. <laughs> You know, it's, 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 it's good to see one of my favorite actors, uh, Gavin McLeod, who just had a charisma bypass. And, uh, <laughs> Gavin McLeod is not the most exciting man in the world. Once, while he was filming Love Boat, he fell overboard and started to drown, and his whole life flashed in front of him, <laughs> and he fell asleep. <laughs> Little, good looking. You're so good looking tonight. What the hell? Sitting next to Dilla, anyone would look good. Aaron Spelling is with us tonight. Aaron Spelling is more than a friend, he's a total stranger. Don Rickles is to comedy what Orson Welles is to pole vaulting. People know this, but Don Rickles has invested in the in the clothing business. He's coming out with a new line of Don Rickles sport shirts. On the pocket, there's an alligator eating his mother. <laughs> Angie Dickinson, honey, you 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 look beautiful. And I those police woman reruns are great. My favorite part is when you're making an arrest. Nothing turns me on more than watching a big bust. <laughs> to talk about our guest of honor. I, uh... <laughs> Mind me, I gotta get a new set of tires. I, uh... I've, uh... I've learned a lot about Joan. Joan has been married three times. Now she just leases. <laughs> in fact, the towels in her home are marked hers and next. <laughs> In England, she used to be an exotic dancer. And just last week at a benefit, she did the dance of the virgins <laughs> from memory. <laughs> and Joan, your dear friend, Linda Evans, was going to be here tonight until she heard we were honoring you. <laughs> Take three. Anison three? Doctor said no aspirin. No aspirin in Anison three. 
No caffeine either. You don't need that. Anison 3 is 100% aspirin free with the aspirin free ingredient doctors recommend most. Hey, Anison 3 sure solved that headache. Then let's watch TV. Just the two of us. <laughs> Anison 3, 100% aspirin free and caffeine free. Everything that touches your body should be this beautiful. Introducing Body Flowers, the new deodorant body spray with a fragrance so beautiful, so delicious, you'll lavish it all over your body. Body Flowers, the new deodorant body spray with four fresh, windblown fragrances. So beautiful. So irresistible. It follows me everywhere. Sunday, John Travolta and Deborah Winger are dynamite. She turned up the heat in An Officer and a Gentleman and just won an Oscar nomination for Terms of Endearment. She's the 80s hottest actress, and Travolta thinks he can tame her. Yep. Fine. Forget it. <laughs> in Urban Cowboy, Sunday. This just in, former NBC newsman Edwin Newman to host this week's Saturday Night Live. That's a fact, Jack. Boy, some people will do anything to stay on television. And now... It's time to introduce our guest of honor, a lady whose success is no accident. She combines grace, beauty, and talent. Now, for one hour every week, she makes people forget the trials and tribulations of living in this modern world by transporting us to a fantasy world, a world of adventure, excitement, and high style. For that, we are all grateful. Your Alexis Carrington is a classic. And dear lady, so are you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Joan Collins. or dais. <laughs> and before I can say anything, I'd like to thank you, Dean, for the beautiful, gorgeous flower arrangement that you sent to my room. Just one single perfect rose in an empty Jack Daniels bottle. <laughs> this has certainly been a long evening. If you watch Dynasty, I think this is the longest time that I've ever gone without changing clothes. <laughs> but I agreed to do this. They promised me a cultural dais. I expected Sir Laurence Olivier, Helen Hayes, Richard Burton, Sir John Gielgud. <laughs> what do I get? Red Buttons, Milton Bell, Phyllis Diller. The only one missing is Benny Hill. <laughs> well, you certainly all gave me a, a working over. I always thought that Alexis was bitchy on Dynasty until I heard you people talking about me tonight. <laughs> B. Arthur, I really enjoyed your dissertation on morality. It seems that everyone these days is concerned about loose morals and sexual permissiveness. But I'll tell you one thing, B. It makes for a great party. <laughs> B, I'm sure that there are more things, there are some things that are more important in life than sex. But what? <laughs> Rich Little, there you are. I adore your impressions, and I imagine that your wife does too. How lucky for her. <laughs> when you go to bed, she says, Rich, do your Tom Selleck. <laughs> and Phyllis. Phyllis Diller, impeccably dressed as always. Her dress looks like Yasser Arafat's sheet with sequins. <laughs> I never expected to see Don Rickles here. Last night, he came down with a case of food poisoning. He bit his tongue. <laughs> You've been really, really busy. Dom has made ten movies in the last two years, and he has such great taste, he never saw one of them. <laughs> and Zsa 
Ball and Angie Dickinson. What a great pair. I'd like to rephrase that. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for coming, and I do. I love both of you. We'll talk later. Dear John Forsythe, who plays my ex-husband on Dynasty, as Alexis, I'm not at all jealous that Blake and Crystal have been married again. In fact, I'm going to buy you both the most beautiful wedding present, a condominium in Beirut. <laughs> <laughs> a super talent with impeccable taste. If it weren't for you, I'd be a celebrity judge on dance fever. <laughs> All of you talented people on the dais, you have the depth of my gratitude in spite of the roasting. My love for life remains constant. It's a beautiful world that we live in. I love the mystery of the universe. Sometimes, I stand in my garden at night, and I look up at the sky. And as I stand there looking up into the infinite distance of measureless vastness, and I see that incredible hugeness of empty space, I am faced with that one eternal question. Why are my closets so small? <laughs> Johnny Carson welcomes Suzanne Flechette. Then on Late Night with David Letterman, meet John Candy. What does Sophia Loren look for in a man? I'm Bryant Gumbel. And tomorrow morning on Today, Gene Shallot finds the answer to that question and much more. Join us tomorrow morning for Sophia Loren on Today. <laughs>